Let's jump directly into it. To manage our global hierarchies in SAP S4HANA using Fiori, we navigate to the application called Manage Global Hierarchies. Select this one. So global hierarchies are any characteristical hierarchies that are maintained centrally in exactly this application. These hierarchies are often also referred to as so-called universal hierarchies. You can see there are already a couple of hierarchies created in my system. And we can now either click here on import hierarchy to import an already existing hierarchy or we can click on create to create a new one from scratch. We will do the latter one now. So click on create. Now first of all we need to select the hierarchy type. Let's click here on the drop down menu. As you can see we can create many different hierarchies with this application. Today we will create financial statement version. Select this one. Next off we need to provide an ID which is up to four characters and alphanumeric. So we will say Z999. Then we must assign our chart of accounts YCOA. This one over here. We need a description, test, financial statement version. And that's basically it. We could provide a note but this is optional. And now we can click on create. And you can see the hierarchy was now created. I can click on this arrow to navigate into the hierarchy. And now before we take a look at the time frame section here, let's quickly display here the hierarchy tab. Because over here when we talk about financial statement versions, we can actually define a couple of parameters. So we'll click on edit. And now you can see here we could adjust the description. And then down here we have different parameters that we could fill. Let me scroll out a bit of the picture so that you can see all the parameters. First of all, you can see there is an aging parameter. So there is actually a value help here. So we need to define those values in customizing beforehand if we want to utilize them. And we could use this aging option so that we can assign aging attributes later to our hierarchy nodes or even the GL accounts in our financial statement version here via the time frame button. If we do so, then as a result, the balance sheet will display the short term, mid term and also long term items of our liabilities and also of our receivables based on their due dates. For now we will leave it as is. Then you can see a button called allow contra note and bank account grouping. And this is actually used especially for the balance of our bank accounts either as a debit balance or as a credit balance. Let me actually give you an example. So here you can see an example from the ZAP help portal. So for instance, if we have those three bank accounts over here, we can assign them to a hierarchy note called cash in bank. So on the debit side and also on the liability side to payable to banks, depending on their debit or credit balance. And if for instance the first two accounts out of the three have a debit balance and the third one has a credit balance, then two of those accounts will be displayed under the cash in bank section on the debit side and the third account will be displayed under the credit side in the section called payables to banks. So this is a quite special topic for our bank accounts. Okay, then you can see another checkbox called allow functional areas. When we select this one, then we can assign functional areas to our financial statement version nodes. And this is only utilized if we want to create our profit and loss statement according to the so-called cost of sales accounting approach. Last but not least, you can see a checkbox called group account number. And if we hit this indicator, then this means that we want to assign group accounts instead of operational GL accounts to our nodes of the financial statement version. Okay, now let's focus here on the time frame. You can see over here, some of the information was copied from the initial screen when we created the financial statement version. There's one more called simulate. So when we hit this indicator, then we can actually simulate how our financial statement version would look like without activating it. We will set it to on for now and I will show you later how this looks like then. Next off, further down you can see the actual structure. As you can see, the system already created here seven nodes and we can't change those ones. So this is how a normal balance sheet and profit and loss statement would look like. We have our asset section, liabilities and equity, as well as our net loss or profit, our profit and loss result, financial statement notes and a section for not assigned GL accounts. What we can do right now is we can mark here one of the lines and then we can click here on this plus symbol. Now we can either create a subnote under our asset section in this case or even assign GL accounts directly. We will do the former one for now. So we provide an ID, let's say current assets like that. Please be aware that this ID can be maximum of 10 characters and here we will write current assets. Then you can see there are three more indicators. One is called plus minus sign change. So if we hit this indicator, then we can reverse the plus or minus sign for the totals being displayed on this node level. So please be aware that this is only for display purposes in our reports, such as our balance sheet and income statement 
application. This has no effect on the calculation of the total or on the gel accounts included in the subnode we are currently creating. So this means that for instance, that revenue is normally displayed in our general ledger as a negative number, which is indicated by a credit. And if we hit here this plus minus sign change, we could say that the revenue should be displayed with a positive number. Then we have here our debit and our credit indicators. So when we hit these indicators, then this means that the item will be displayed in this subnode if it has a debit balance or if it has a credit balance. So normally we would hit both of those indicators because we want the balance to be displayed no matter if it's a debit or a credit balance. However, there is a special case for our bank accounts. So normally for the bank accounts in our asset section, we would only select debit over here because we only want the balance to be displayed under the asset structure if it is a debit balance. And later on in the liability section, we would also assign a subnote for our bank accounts and there we would set the credit balance. Okay, for now you leave it as is and hit on OK. Now you can see here the subnote was created and we could continue like that. So always mark the line, click on plus and then add another subnote. Once we reach then the end of our hierarchy, we can actually click on the plus symbol and then assign our GL accounts. So from GL account and into GL account. And we will now just take a couple of GL accounts from here up until let's say this one over here. There we could also select debit and credit. For now we leave it as is. Then hit on OK. And now you can see the accounts are assigned over here. OK, so far so good. Next off, there is also another symbol over here, the three dots. Let's click on those ones. And here we have the option to actually create fast entries. So if we hit on this one, we can now assign here multiple GL accounts. However, if I select the upper hierarchy node, click on the three dots and select fast entry. I have the option to create several subnodes at the same time and even utilize the plus symbol to create even more of those. So for instance, I could say here non-current assets and then non-tangible assets and so on. Let's just say hit on OK. And you can see the system now created those here in a fast way. Then what we can always do is we can select the line and then just drag and drop it like this, for instance, here. And now you can see the subnode was moved to another subnode. So this also works via drag and drop. Next off, let's click on the three dots again. We can also import nodes via this button. We can select this hierarchy and then we can say that we want, for instance, this section here to be copied. Hit on OK. And now you can see the section was copied successfully. You can also utilize this export import functionality. Let's click on this one. Here we can say export to spreadsheet. And once opened, you can now actually edit the spreadsheet. So here you can see we have different types. So root, node, GL account. And let's say I want to create more of those nodes. Then what I could do is I could add here several lines. So like that. And the only thing I need to fill here is the type. So let's say this is also a node and one more node. Then I have the ID. So let's say 2.1 and 2.1.1. Like that. And now all I would need to do is I will provide here a description. Let's say test 2.1.1 and then I will mark the lines and then we will remember that the top node is 2 as you can see. So we scroll to the right. Here you can maintain all the languages if necessary. And then there is a column called parent ID. And here we would provide now the number 2 because this is the parent. Then I will mark here also credit and debit like that. And that's basically it. Now I will save the Excel file, close it, and then I can click here on export import again, import from spreadsheet, browse for your file, and then click on upload file. And you can already see under the liability section, we now have two more hierarchy nodes. Those are the ones we just edited in the Excel file. So this is also a flexible way for you to create your financial statement versions fast and easy. Last but not least, please be aware that there is a drop down menu where we could change the language. So for instance, if I go here to another language, let's say Danish, then I could now maintain here also the other languages. Hit here on the blue one and then change the description for this language. Okay, let's go back to English. Last but not least, we will set here now the simulation to on and save our hierarchy. Now what we can do is the following. We can take this one over here. Then we can go to, for instance, the application called balance sheet income statement, change here the company code, and then select our financial statement version, the one we just created. You can see it's still in draft mode. Hit on go. And now you can see how the hierarchy would look like. 
even though we did not yet activate the hierarchy. Let's go back. Now, last but not least, you can click here on activate so that the hierarchy is fully functional. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, where we have a community chat and where I post lots of informative documents about SAP. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.